called the chosen. Someone say the chosen. Someone say the chosen. But I'm not talking about the series on TV. I'm talking about the biblical chosen. For it says he chose us. We didn't choose him. Someone say amen. amen. And we're going to look at the 12 apostles, the 12 original 12 the disciples. Amen. We just went through nine weeks of Peter, so we don't need to cover him, so let's say amen. amen. But we're going to cover, cover the rest of them, and we're going to learn life applications. We're going to learn how God chose broken failures, what a bad past, common men, 12 ordinary men, but he used to change the world. And I want you to know you will see this from the Old Testament to the New Testament. God chooses men and women that we would never look at, we would never glance at, we would never think that he would be able to use them. When I look in the mirror every single day, I realize that I am not worthy, I am not deserving, I am not good. But because of his grace and his mercy and his everlasting love, we get to serve our Messiah. Because mess ups need Messiah. Someone say amen. And every day, who's, who's, uh, every service we pass these out, who's, is this been a blessing to people for the glory of God? Amen. It's my points, my sermon, the teaching. Thank God for David's doing an awesome job. And then we have the schedule as well as scan codes for our app for prayer requests. Make sure to get it before you leave because I'm just going to reference this preaching and you'll have the scriptures, the text, some of the main points for the glory of God. Someone say the chosen. This Sunday we're going to be looking at, go ahead. Paul. This Sunday we're going to be looking at the first apostle. And every week I'm not going to tell you who I'm teaching about. Uncle Steve, you got to be here and you got to catch it. Amen. This Sunday, we're talking about Andrew. Someone say Andrew. Amen. We're talking about the first disciple, Andrew. I want you to understand that when I looked at the text, because there's only like 10, 12 verses about Andrew. So I have to read up on it and give one solid point. And here's the point. Andrew the bringer. Someone say the bringer. You guys make fun of me when I make my corny little bit of videos. Be a bringer. And you guys joke about it. You laugh about it. But when I looked at that, I said, Lord, Andrew was a bringer. Elder Mike, you listen to that? When you look at this, he didn't care about anything else except bringing people to Jesus. You don't see him in the Bible preaching messages. You don't see him in the Bible getting into this theological debate about, about you know all what it is and, and, and the different doctrines, and you don't see him writing letters. You don't got a book. He, you don't got none of that. He got twelve verses and boils down to one thing. Here's what he cared about: bringing people to Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the living Son of God. Father, loosen your anointing because I can't speak. Let us understand the significance and the seriousness of this man of God's life. And let us apply it to ours. And all God's people said, Amen. give him some glory for the glory of God. <laughs> when you look at the, the biblical significance, he is actually the first disciple. John 1 says, he was with John the Baptist. He was with John the Baptist in his ministry. What an amazing uh, resume, if you would put it like that, that he would have. He was with John the Baptist's ministry. He was with Jesus' ministry. He transitioned to both of them. And Ricky, when the Bible says that Jesus was passing by, John the Baptist said these words, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. And the Bible says John the Baptist told his disciples, Follow him. In another place, John the Baptist said, I must decrease, and he must increase for the glory of God. Andrew, and we believe in John 1, that John 1, verses 35 to 42, it says, Andrew and another disciple. We believe it's John because John always talks about himself in the third person. 
Just like at the Passover, the one that Jesus loved. He was trying to be humble and prideful at the same time. So say what I'm saying. You guys never are like, I'm never like. But that's what he was doing. He was talking about himself in third person. So we believe it was John, but we're not going to talk about John today. We're talking about Andrew. Andrew, the Bible says, that when John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God, it says they followed Jesus. And when Jesus looked back, he said, What do you want? They replied, Rabbi, which is teacher, where are you staying? Jesus said, come see. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon and they went with him to the place where he was staying. And they remained with him the rest of the day. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of these men who heard John said and then followed Jesus. Someone say, follow Jesus. Andrew went to find his brother Simon and told him, we have found the Messiah, which means Christ. Then Andrew brought Simon to meet Jesus. Looking intently at Simon, Jesus said, your name is Simon, son of John or Jonah, but you will be called Cephas, which means Peter, which means rock. And later on in Matthew 4, 17 and 19, we find out that after a while, Jesus officially stamped on disciples. We find out that Andrew was the first disciple, but Andrew went and called Simon Peter. Who brought Simon Peter to Jesus? Andrew. He brought him to Simon Peter. And then Simon Peter changes the world. Someone say that if you understand. Changes the world. And I look at that and I said, hold on, God. Andrew was the first one. Andrew should have been the one. Andrew should have a letter. Andrew should have some kind of preaching. Andrew should have been the one that preached on the day of Pentecost and 3,000 people got saved and then 5,000 people got saved. He said it was Peter. I don't find anywhere in the scriptures where Andrew denied or left or betrayed Jesus. But Peter does. But Andrew is the one chronological when it mentions all the disciples. Peter's name is before Andrew. Why is this? Andrew's name should have been first. But I love, I don't see Andrew arguing. I don't see him fighting for first place. I don't see him caring who gets the credit. I don't see him fighting for who's going to preach first. I don't see him fighting for being the intimate settings with Jesus. Because Peter, James, and John was. Shouldn't Andrew have said, how about me? I'm okay with Peter, but could I be one of the three that are the main guys that are seeing the resurrection of the little girl, that are seeing Moses and Elijah on the Mount of Transfiguration? Could I get a chance? I wonder what would happen if men of God, women of God, people of God, for the glory of God, doesn't matter about this pulpit, but matters about the highways and the byways and the darkness and the hurt and the pain on these streets out of these four walls. It says it ain't about nothing else. I just want to bring people to Jesus. This is what I get out of Andrew's story. Some say Andrew the bringer. He brings Peter to Jesus. And after a while, when you look at the Gospels, you'll find out that Jesus had like 70, 72 disciples that followed. And after a while, a rabbi or a teacher would pick his original 12 or pick his main guys he's going to pour into after trial and error and, and teaching and in and, and a season. Well, in Matthew 4, we find out that he finally comes. And out of all the 70, he says to 12, follow me. Follow me. In essence, that means I've chose you, I chose you, I chose you. Someone say the chosen. And he calls him and says, Simon Peter, I want to make you a fisherman of men. Did you know Andrew was on the boat? Andrew was on the same boat. But why did he say Andrew drove the net? Why is Peter getting all the credit? I don't understand. How about give Andrew? Simple 
not go away from me, depart from me. And then Jesus says, do not be afraid. I'm going to make you fishermen of men. Andrew is right there. Give him a chance to do something. Give him a chance to see the miraculous. Give him a chance for an illustration. Give him a chance for a preaching moment. Give him a chance to write a letter so he can be forever memorized in the Christian community. But no, I believe Jesus did it for a reason. Because many disciples were fighting for position, for place, for pulpit, for the scene, and for notoriety. But Andrew, you'll always see him in the back, saying it doesn't matter as long as I can be a part of it. It doesn't matter about my name. It matters about his name. It doesn't matter my will. It matters his will. He 
sent his disciples. Come on, that's right. <laughs> when John said follow him, John should have never had any more disciples. But sometimes people like man, people like the high, let me say this and clarify it. It ain't about a church, it ain't about a pastor, it ain't about an organization, it ain't about a building, it ain't about a plaque, it ain't about a fellowship. so sad many people still follow John. John said, don't follow me, follow him. Today, I want you to know, when man follows man, God will allow that man to hurt him. I know this, like, because I was young, and I want a man to prove up, and I want him to be at the pulpit. And I want it to be in the limelight. And I want it to be in the show. And I want it to be called the preach to the big revivals. I want it to be. And God, I, 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 the devil. God had to break me. And show me you're in it for the wrong reason. And when he showed me that. And he broke me. And he restored me. And he humbled me. I don't care if there's 5,000 in the building. I look up to heaven, I fall on my knees, and say, God, I give you glory for what you're doing. I'm not worthy. Use me for the glory of God. Let me be small in my own eyes, valuable in your eyes, and you get all the honor, all the praise, and all the glory. Where God is looking for some Andrews. I just want to bring people to Jesus. I want to bring my family to Jesus. If you have that Jesus living on the inside of you, you can help but do just that. The Bible says the mouth is, let me say it like this. What the heart is full of, the mouth speaks. Eric, am I right? What are you talking about all the time? Talking about cars, you're obsessed with cars. Talking about watches, you're obsessed with watches. You're talking about houses, you're obsessed with houses. You're talking about materialism, you're obsessed with materialism. You're talking about a person or, or a relationship for you, and you're obsessed with that person. And let me put a note real good and real clear. I'm okay with having nice things, but I'm not okay, and most importantly, God ain't okay with when the nice things have us. God is saying, put me first, front, and center. And when you see first the kingdom of God and his righteousness first, then all will be added. So I'll say amen. So he was about the son of man. He wasn't about man. So I'll say amen. And I want you to listen. If I had to give a second point, my second point would be this. God uses us even when we doubt that he could do the impossible. Can I say that again? God uses us even when we doubt that he could do the impossible. In John chapter 6, it shows us one of the big miracles of Jesus that's recorded in four of the gospel. Now there's prophetic significance to this, I can't get into it, but here's what I'm going to get into. The feeding of the 5,000 was not only 5,000, that was the counting men, not women and children. Am I right about it? So maybe 15,000, 10,000 minimum, which is probably not, but let's just say that. Jesus tests Philip because he's from the Tata, so is Andrew. It says, Philip says, let him go because they're famished. The Bible says Jesus had compassion. And Philip said, feed him. Philip says, feed him. This will take a year's salary, maybe more. And even if we could, where are we going to get the resources? How are we going to get it? How are we going to distribute it? Andrew says, I found a boy. Someone say, Andrew the bringer. Out of the thousands. Andrew's looking. It's literally 
vast crowd like this. And Jesus says, give it to me. He says, give it to me. Give me what you got. I'm going to stop and talk about the boy. There's Philip that says, I can't do it. There's Philip that says, I won't do it. There's Philip that says, there's no way they can do it. There's an Andrew that says, maybe there's a way. There's an Andrew that says, yeah, I can do it, but then backs away. Andrew that says, yeah, I can be used by God, but I'm oh, too bad. Andrew that says, let me try and then backs away. Andrew that says, I'm going to get involved in church, then backs away. Andrew that says, I'm going to give my life to God, but then pulls back. But then there's a little boy with no name. You don't know where he's from. You don't know where he's where he got the little food from. You don't know what's going on. But he says, the little I have, it ain't about my name. It's about you right here anyway. I'll give you what I got. And Jesus looked to heaven. He blessed him. He broke him. And he thanked God for it. I want to stop and tell you right now, the little you have, the little praise, the little worship, the little knowledge, the little service, Jesus, that's in your hands. It is nothing but give it to my hands. Bible. 
Come on. Amen. It gives every answer Amen. to every problem, every struggle, every hurt, every pain. God wrote a book. It's his instructions. Amen. It's our navigation system. Amen. It's all that we need. And it shows us what we need. And it gives us the recipe and formula to a blessed life serving Jesus. Amen. Not an easy life, but a blessed life. Thank you. If you haven't been in it, it's simple. The enemy wants to keep us ignorant. But if you like Andrew, I'm not there for the height. I'm not there to make my name and lights. I'm not there to promote my agenda. I am there to worship my God, to receive his word and do what he says and bring people to the kingdom of heaven, to the grace and mercy of my Lord, Master, Messiah, Jesus. Some say amen. Some say be a bringer. Some of them should say be a bringer. Be a bringer. Can I give you one more what God showed me? Come on. Can I give you one more? Come on. Here's the third point. Here's the third point. God will answer your prayers, but sometimes not like you want, but even in greater ways. So, in John chapter 12, well, can I show you something? I'm just going to reference this, Chris. In John chapter 12, it says that there were some Greeks came to Philip. And then Philip went to Andrew. And then Andrew went to Jesus. Some say be a bringer. He's always bringing people. He says, there's some Greeks, Jesus, that want to meet you. <coughs> they want to talk to you. This is during the Passover season. You know we're in the Passover right now. I love how God works our series in the seasons we're in. Passover ends on the 30th. We've been, Jewish community's been celebrating it for seven days. I'm studying Andrew. This is the Passover. You know what the Passover has? It is centered around the Lamb. Behold the Lamb of God! Now, he's bringing the Greeks, the Gentiles, the non-Jews, hey, they want, they want to talk to you. And Jesus goes and says, if a grain of wheat does not die, it only saves singular and cannot produce much. But if it goes in the ground and dies, it will produce much, much more. Those who hang on to their life will lose it, but those who lose their life will gain it. Andrew saying, uh, what does that have to do with some following? <laughs> There's people that want to hear your word. But the word, if you understand the Bible, was perfectly fine. Because here's what he said in essence. I know what you want, Andrew. You want to bring the Gentiles to salvation. But I'm not going to let you do this. But when I die, because I'm the grain of wheat, there's going to be much harvest for the kingdom of heaven. But I, he puts a stipulation. But if you really want to follow me, you're going to give up your life and follow me. In essence, he was saying two things. It's going to be answered, but not the way you want. But number two, they just want to talk to me. They don't want to follow me. Come on. Come on. They just want to see what I have to offer. They want the blessing, not the blesser. They want the creation, not the creator. They want the healing, not the healer. They want the provision, not the provider. They want what they can get, not what they can give. But I want you also to know that that's going to be Peter, your brother, that's going to bring the Gentiles. In Acts chapter 10, Peter proclaims the gospel to the Gentiles. And at this, I would be 
after him, I'd be like, you know what, Jesus? I'm going back to John the Baptist. I don't even like this church anyway. Because that's what people do. Am I right? Am I wrong? I'm not getting fed there. No, they're not feeding you the pride you want for them to give you. Wow. But Andrew, don't leave the ministry. Andrew stays put. He says, it ain't about me anyway. Because I'm going to give you a word. Sometimes you're going to bring people and they're going to change the world. Sometimes you're going to bring people and they're going to be used and the multiplication of blessings is going to fall off them because of you for the glory of God. And sometimes you're going to bring people and they ain't going to get saved. In that time and in that way. But I want you to know, it isn't up to us to change them and change the circumstance. I bring them to Jesus and whatever God wants, one man plants, one man waters, but God brings an increase we don't know their motive. We don't know what's going on. But I don't need to know all that and anything else. All I need to know is I need you to come to Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He's the only one that can change your life. He's the only one that can save you from hell. He's the only one that can change your family. He's the only one that can take your rebellious children and bring them to submission unto God. He's the only one that can get you out of darkness and come to life. He's the only one that can take the chains off. He's the only one. I'm going to keep following you. I'm going to keep bringing people to you. Because I didn't deserve to be brought to you. But because you brought me to yourself, I'm going to constantly bring people to you till you come back Amen. again. To the glory of you. tried to bring the Gentiles in Passover. He followed them because he knew the utterance of Lamb of God. In Genesis, I believe it's 20 or 22, something like that. And as Abraham is going up the mountain to sacrifice his son, his only begotten son, the one that he loved with all his heart, the son says, Dad, I see the knife, I see the altar, the wood. I see the thing that we're going to create fire with. Where's the lamb? Genesis, Abraham says, the Lord will provide himself a lamb. We know when Abraham gets there, he gets tested, he passes the test. He says, Abraham, Abraham, I see that you are a man of faith. Do not touch the son. Because in essence, what happened was, in the fence there was a ram, not a lamb. But Abraham was a prophet of God. And he was speaking of Jesus. Because when I was in Israel, I stood exactly where Abraham stood. In the land of Moriah. Wow. You know the mountain he was on? Golgotha. In essence, here's what Jesus said. 
you don't got to take out your kid. I'm going to send my son. He's going to be the Lamb of God. And I'm going to crush him so I don't have to crush you. Come on, come on. Let him die. sacrifice the lamb I want you to take the blood dip hyssop in the blood put it on the lentils strike the lentils see the picture there strike the lamb of God against the wood let the blood splatter strike the lentils of the door and all who dwells on the other side of that door they will not be touched he says, and make sure there's no yeast in the house. Yeast was the thing you put in bread and it would pop up and, and, and rise the bread. All the Jews in this season, make sure there's no crumbs in their house of bread. Yeast in the Bible represents pride and sin. Passover is a representation of this. Because of the Lamb's blood, because of His sacrifice, you should be under the blood, not trampling over the blood, and you should allow God to take out of your house, your family, your life, sin and pride, so it won't puff you up. So let's say amen. This is the beautiful gospel. We deserve death, hell, and the grave. We deserve judgment. But like Andrew, he understood the significance of the term. Behold the Lamb of God! And when Jesus died, death passed over your house. Death passed over my house. Grace was given. Mercy was given. Love was given. He said, and take that Lamb and eat all of it. Don't break any bones because not one bone in Jesus' body was broken. Wow. Consume. You can't have some of Jesus. I'll say that. You can't have some of Jesus. I'll take his provision, but I won't take, you know, his commands. Come on. I'll take his healing, but he can't take my sin. I'll take his love. But I don't want none of that repercussion stuff. I'll take his name. But I can't humble my name. Jesus said, if you don't eat my flesh and drink my blood, you can't have none of me. Passover says this. Because of his sacrifice, because of his blood, I'm going to let God take the pride and the sin. And I'm going to receive all that he has for me. That he would increase. That I would decrease. And I would follow him in spirit and truth. I will not hold on to my life. Because if I hold on to it, I'll lose it. But if I lose it, I'll gain it. Who's ready to let go of their old life and say, God, I'm going to be a bringer. I'm going to bring myself first. I'm going to bring others. And I'm going to bring them to the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. I roll it down to one word, one sentence, and I'm done. Andrew's life says this to you. Ready? It doesn't matter who 
gets the credit as long as God gets the glory. That's the Royal Mountain. There it is. Doesn't matter who gets the credit as long as God gets the glory. I was told that from a pastor. And this pastor, his church went down to 12, 15 people. He was one of my teachers in seminary, pastor school. And his, his servant in the church was with me in school. We graduated at the same time. We was learning all the same things. So this pastor, teacher, bishop leaves that location that's failing in Wisconsin. I think it was Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. There, you know that area? And he moves to Indiana. The guy that I was with in school takes off that service. Guess what happens? It goes from 15 to 300. The church is booming, busting at the seams, accelerating growth. That pastor, Chris Morrison, he would pass by a building all the time and say, one day we're going to hit this building. One day. Well, he left. Guess who buys the building? The servant. He's telling the story in our church, and he was so hurt about it, so discouraged about it. He said, God, I was right there. You couldn't do it for me. And that's what God told him. He said, you have to serve me in a way that you don't care who gets the credit as long as God gets the glory. If we have a church full of people, men, women, servants of God that has that idea, we will outgrow every single church, every single building. There will be no room and the kingdom of heaven will not come. I end with this verse. 1 Corinthians 15, whatever you do for the Lord. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be firm, steadfast, and movable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, always being superior, excelling, doing more than enough in the service of the Lord, knowing and being continuously aware that your labor in the Lord is not futile, it is never wasted are to no purpose. One translation says, your worship and service does not come back void. Let's serve the Lord. Let's follow the Lamb. Let's bring other people to Him. Your life will be always empty, discouraged, and hurt until you follow Him. Bring yourself, bring others, and let God use you. Father, we thank you, Jesus, for your anointing. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for this table that we're going to encounter right now, God. Lord Andrews mentioned as well, when Peter went fishing, Andrew went with him. But they was brought back, and you had a table for them to remind them the mission and vision. Father, I thank you, Lord. Because we get to sit at your table. We get to receive this covenant. We get to partake in your promise. The blood, the sacrifice, the cross on Redemption's Hill called Calvary. Someone say, Jesus, forgive me. I haven't been following and bringing people to you like I'm supposed to. I acknowledge my wrong and realize there is no other life better than following the Lamb and bringing people to Him. I confess my sin. I am a sinner. But thank you for sending your Son, Jesus, to die a criminal's death, buried and raised on the third day to give me eternal life. I call him in my heart and my life. Help me, deliver me, and help me serve you in a way that it doesn't matter who gets the credit as long as you get the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. To download our SFGM app in the App Store to stay current with podcasts, teachings, Bible school books, 
resources, and more. Available on our app or our website at sfgm.org. God bless.